And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So fear who? Who are we going to stand in front? Are we going to stand in front of the world's judgments? The court system? No. We're going to stand in front of our Lord who died for us. Our Heavenly Father. There's only one God. One God. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Son is the body that we're called into. Are not two sparrows so for fathering? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me, this is Jesus Christ speaking, before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man of variance against his father, and a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against his, her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household, which we're seeing all over the Eastern world today. He that loves father or mother, more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Let's go over to Matthew 16. Then he says, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. But what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in change for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. The Antichrist spirit is very strong in the Western church. See, anti just doesn't mean, you know, like against something, like anti-war, against war, anti-nukes. It also means to be in place of and we are preaching a false narrative of Jesus. We truly are. Yes, he so loved the world that he gave his only son. Yes, Romans 5a says that he commends his love towards us when we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. We know the essence of God is love, which is found in holiness, by the way. It's found in holiness for those who lay their lives down for Christ and pick up the cross. I left work, but a few years ago we had this meeting. And I'm, you know, since I'm not working, I'll just say who he is, you know, I, you know. But we had a meeting saying that Nathan is no longer being called Nathan, he's gonna be called Natalie. And during this meeting, I stood up in the spirit and I says, no, I cannot do that. Well, you're going to have to do that. You're going to fire. No, I love him too much to do that. No, you're going to have to do that or you can fire. I guess you didn't hear what I said. I love him too much to do that. You know, and I remember giving that testimony to other Christians. Well, you're not very loving. You're not very sweet. You know, I have transgenders and I'm just going to pray for them. I'm just going to love them. Well, wait a second. So a guy's name is Dan. And all of a sudden, he wants to become called Daniel. And you're working with him. And you're not going to go to Dan and say, Hey, listen, Dan, you're created to be a man. In your heart, there's a seed. You are the glory of God. You are created in His image. And if you repent and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you will inherit your purpose. And you will understand your purpose, your created purpose, your true identity, that you are born in His image created in his image. You were not going to do that? Now, I never had that opportunity. They split us away. 
but I have now and I actually have done that exact same thing because listen Jesus said this in John 6 44 no man can come to me and as the father in heaven draw them God is the one that draws men into repentance are we going to be allow somebody to be so rebellious that they're going to cut their things off and tuck it all in and and we're going to say well well we love them we love them matter of fact i know one christian who sold him a nice little scarf i guess to hide his adam apple are you kidding me that's not love that's rebellion because this is what religion is Religion is to mix the Word of God with the world, but say you're of Christ. And that's a lie, and God hates liars. So, if you're lying, call yourself, I'm a man of God, I go to church, I read my Bible, I go, but yet you're still carnal in nature, you're a liar. You know, you think about this. Think about this. Now, you're going to want to share this. You want to bring this to your pastors. You're going to want to. Because you can save your pastor's soul and pastor's life. Who's not preaching about the true nature of Christ. The narrative is that we have to pick up the cross. We have to lay our lives down. We have to sacrifice our lives down to Jesus Christ. That's our reasonable service. To sacrifice our lives. And then allow the power of God. Grace is the power of God in our lives. Grace is to be made holy and righteous. Jesus said, be ye perfect, for your Father in heaven is perfect. And we said, well, you know, he's only talking about spiritual manifestation. Yeah, the Holy Spirit leading and guiding our lives, where we just lose our cardinal nature. You know, I'm telling you, I had somebody tell me a while back, well, I'm waiting for that Rick Porter that we all know and we all love, the one that's always smiling, the one that's always praising God and worshiping God. Well, they see me out here all the time worshiping Christ. I preach the gospel, I preach the truth, I lay hands on the sick, you know, I hug people, I love people, I tell people they need Jesus Christ or they're going to die in their sins, out on the streets. I have gone to neighborhoods, seen people healed, and now they're part of my church in their neighborhoods. A lot of these people won't be welcome in your church. Oh, yes, they will. No, they won't because, and even if they do, they see, boy. This person's talking about that person. You know, it's so nice when you first get in there all huggy, but then when you get to know them, they're all talking about each other for the raft of God. What? Oh, the raft of God. Hmm. God is just love. We don't have to worry about his raft. He's just love. It's revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So you really don't want to pick up the cross and follow after Jesus. You really want to call yourself nothing more than sinners. Oh, hallelujah, I'm just a sinner saved by grace, right? When grace is the power of God to walk upright before God, where sins have no dominion over you because you're dead in Christ. And this, that is the gospel. That's the beauty of the gospel. That's the grace of God, the power of God to carry us through every storm to make us holy and righteous so he can dwell within us. Because that which was known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful. I see this all the time. I see people, instead of coming to church, already, you know, worshiping and praising him and thankfulness and entering the gates with thanksgiving and shouting unto the Lord. Oh, the Holy Spirit's finally here. Look at, you know, the Holy Spirit's taking over the crowd now the, by the third song, an inspirational spirit, a human spirit comes upon and people start finally praising God and people will call it the Holy Spirit. For God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. For this cause, God, God gave them up unto vile afflictions. So this is a judgment of God. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, 
burning their own lust one towards another, man with man working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meant. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them, God gave them up over to a reprimate mind or depraved mind to those things which were not convenient. You know, he gave you up so much. I'm talking about right now, basically the, the pride people and, and the people preach that there is no hell and all that stuff. That's what I'm really I'm talking about right now. But look at how he starts this off in chapter 2. Well, I'll finish. We're on 129. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, melanie, whisper, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, just being the parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, impalatable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Therefore thou art excusable, O man, whoever, whosoever thou art that judges, for within thou judge another, thou condemn thyself, for thou that judges do us the same thing. Well, we don't hang a gay pride flag, and we don't have women pastors. Hey, we're doing so good, you know, hallelujah, you know, but yet, there's bitterness, envy, and people go to work and they hang their nice pictures of Jesus all over the computer. Their boss comes to them, give them a job they want to handle, they rise up in the flesh. Oh, you know, I did that yesterday. Why don't somebody else do that? And we just so carnal in nature because we are not being told the truth. We have to lay our lives down, pick up the cross. The grace of God is the power of God to walk up right before God. That is grace. It's holiness. And that is the essence of God. It's when faith comes by the Spirit. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not underneath the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variances, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Envy and murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like if I told you and I told you before, as I have also told you now in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, you know, I'm saved, once saved, always saved. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. But yet, we talk about each other, we got cliques in our church, and we have all this stuff going on because we're not preaching, I don't wanna know anything about you, but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I'm gonna give you a narrative. There's a guy, Joe, at your local church, and his wife is named Joanne. You know, and Joanne reads the Bible every day. Joanne's, you know, hallelujah. And, and she's just on fire for God. And Joe just kind of hangs around, just kind of hangs around, just kind of hangs around. And then all of a sudden that witchcraft, manipulating spirit gets on Joanne because she is the dominant force. She flipped things over. She's the head of the household against God. You know, men are supposed to be the head of the household. Pastor says nothing. He's just happy. You know, hey, you know, the beautiful picture of the cross. Don't pick it up. There's a beautiful picture of the cross. He doesn't preach against sin. He just goes through. They read the Bible all the time. Now, the Holy Spirit manifests in that guy. He might have the Holy Spirit. I'm talk I am talking about pastors who have the Holy Spirit, but they're also controlled by the Antichrist spirit. And, and it's all through the, the church. So, all of a sudden, he starts getting on fire. He starts laying his life down. And all of a sudden, instead of being called to be a pastor, he's actually a chosen vessel to be a pastor. So the first thing he does is like, man, look, the spirits are so wicked in this church. Man, you know. So he starts preaching. I don't want to care anything about 
anything. I don't want to know anything about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We got to pick up the cross and follow after Jesus. We are baptized into His death. He preaches against sin. He preaches about picking up the cross and following Jesus, becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. He preaches the way we are taught to preach. That should be a theme. Jesus Christ being crucified and we are crucified with Him where sins have no dominion over us. We are to pick our cross and follow Him daily. He said, if you want to be my disciple, pick up your cross and follow after me. If you want to be worthy of me, pick up your cross daily and follow after me. Right? So that's a theme throughout the, the church. You know, until the church gets on fire, he preaches it 5, 10, 15 minutes every time they're together. You know, it doesn't have to be the essence of the sermon, but it has to be the theme throughout the church. And then he catches fire. And then he goes to Joanne and he goes to Joe. Joe, when are you going to start being a spiritual leader of your household? Joe, this is what I want you to do. I want you to read the Gospel of John, a chapter or two every night, and you teach Joanne. Well, she's a spiritual leader. How? She knows the Bible. You hear me. You are. And Joanne, you are going to humble yourself. You're going to edify. You're going to pray for your husband. You're going to edify your husband. He is the head of the household. Well, you know, I don't agree with you. Well, then go find other ground to worship on because this ground is holy. That is a man of God. Oh, but we're such a wimp. We are a wimpy Christian nation. We are such wimps. You came in late on your life. You can't even tell Dan, who's turning into Danielle, you know, that, hey, you're created to be a man. I love you too much to ever call you anything but Dan. Well, I might get fired. Well, so what, hypocrite? You're going to hell if you don't. Don't you know his blood is on you? Don't you know this stuff? You don't. We should be ashamed. We are such hypocrites in America. Cannot stand for the gospel of truth. We don't even, we're not even going to lose our life if we preach in the streets. Hey, am I going to get killed by preaching in the streets? Is anybody going to shoot me? Hello? Are you going to shoot me for preaching the gospel in the streets? Am I going to lose my head by preaching the gospel in the streets? No. No. But are you ashamed of the gospel? Oh, you little mouse. You're a hypocrite. You're going to hell if you don't repent. This is God's honest truth. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. Hypocrites, you're going to hell if you don't repent. Pick up your cross. Follow me, says Jesus. We are in a war. We're in a battle. But where's my army? Oh, oh, you know, you're kings. You're kings, but you're not priests. Priests intercede on behalf of their nation. That's what priests do. They intercede. They sit there and they sacrifice their lives for the good of others. And then the Holy Spirit will be such powerful power, power in us that we'll also lay right kings because this prosperity message, oh God just wants to bless you, right? It's such a lie, such a phony hypocrite. You're dying, you're going to go to hell. I'm telling you, prosperity is this. That I don't need anything because I got Jesus Christ in my life. I don't need anything else. I can sacrifice my life. I can be led by the Spirit. I don't care about the things tomorrow. I don't have to hoard my guns, hoard a bunch of food because I'm worried about tomorrow. Oh, you're not very wise. No, I got the Spirit. I am wise. I don't watch the news. You know how I learned about, about Israel? About four or five days after attack, the Lord spoke to me. And he actually had me go and watch it on, on a YouTube channel. But he spoke to me. I don't watch the news. I don't worry about tomorrow. I don't have to hoard things. But you hypocrites, when you get left behind, right? And you know who you're going to hate the most at first? You're going to hate your pastor the most. Because the only, if we get raptured up, you know how you're going to know? Your kids who love Jesus, but yet... Haven't come to that cross world where they have to pick up the cross and follow him. And you're going to say, Pastor, we did everything you said. We went to your Bible studies. We did everything. Everything. We prayed. We went to church. What happened, Pastor? Ba 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 ba. And then you're going to go through such tribulations. Oh. And I don't know when he's coming. 
I'm not one of these pre, post, or, or mid, you know, rapture guy. I don't care. When he comes, he comes. I'm prepared for him. But I know time is short, and I'm out there preaching the gospel to every creature. Not just supporting people overseas, but every creature, every mouse, every rat, every building, every person got to hear Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And it started at work. It started at work. When I left work, there had to be other 10, 11, 12 other Christians behind. But this is from the Lord. When I left work, the light went with me. And the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engages in warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him, Jesus Christ, and will listen him as a soldier. Brothers and sisters, when you pick up the cross, you are so free. You are so free. You're not going to want to play Mortal Kombat. You're not going to want to, you know, watch baseball and football and basketball, especially nowadays when time is so short. And you're going to be free of these things. You're not even going to care about these things. Oh, you sound religious. No. Religious, again, it's like I said earlier, religion is mixing the Word of God with the world and saying you're of Christ. That's religion. And you're going to be always horrified. You're always going to be, you're never going to be free until you pick up that cross and decide I'm going to be, I'm going to sacrifice my life for Jesus Christ. And there's freedom that reigns. You just don't want the things of the world. And there's a melody in your heart all the time. Whatever you do in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to be so free and so peaceful. But very few of you are going to find that because they're not being taught the truth about the cross. Why do you think Jesus said, "Broad is the way to destruction? He's not talking about the world. He's talking about those who he's trying to gather together, but straight and narrow gate, and few will find it. Because he knows that at end times, there's only be few who actually pick up the cross and fighting Satan, coming out against Satan, coming on his turf with the Lord Jesus Christ, in a position of victory, knowing that you're victorious, knowing that you're holy and righteous, knowing that faith can work through you now because you have received the gift of righteousness. Pride says, well, you know, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, grace is the power of God to stand upright before God and be used by God to fight Satan on his territory. This world belongs to him, but God created it. God's going to come. God's in control. He's sovereign. But I just read how he just, hey, you want to worship Satan? You want to play your basketball games? Can you imagine your grandchildren or your children or your nieces and nephews? Your other children are bragging about their dads. Oh, my dad's a, a fireman. My dad's a police officer. My dad plays for the NFL. My dad can drop 35 foot jump shots 50% of the time. Well, but my dad or my grandpa or my uncle can cast demons out of people, can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and should raise the dead. How great is that if you pick up your cross? You see, you don't hate the things of the world. Hate, as we understand it, it's not hate the way God understands it. What God hates is anything that takes your focus off Him. Hope you get this, hypocrite. You're going to hell if you don't. Let's unify. Let's fight. Let's war. In Jesus' name, I hope you get this. Amen.